Okay, welcome. Um, so this is the lecture uh, for the second unit for the Design 2 class. And in the second unit, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, about the three-dimensional nature of color. Like if the whole first unit was really about the color wheel, which is primarily just thinking about the two-dimensional, the relationship mostly of the differences between hue, um, whereas now we're going to be talking about hue and value and intensity and how those three things relate. If you remember at the end of the last lecture, I showed this image. And so this lecture is going to, and this is part of the project that uh, we're going to be doing for, for unit two. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what this means, how you make this and, and what you learn from it. So the first thing we have to understand is we have to understand the Munsell color wheel. We talked about the Munsell color wheel earlier. The main thing we mentioned was how um, Munsell, like a lot of other people, really noticed that the area for oranges is uh, should be and is kind of small compared to the region of greens. And, and the way he's designed that color wheel reflects that. Uh, notice how um, everywhere there's a 10, right? That is represent the um, the most set or the most uh, pure version based on his system. So in terms of a yellow, a ten yellow is the the pure, the true yellow, right? And then um, we go to five Y and then to ten um, yellow red and then five yellow red um, all the way around um, and vice versa. So this numbering system gives you a place for numerous in between tertiary colors. But the other fact nature of the system is not just the color wheel and how it kind of like can create a lot of these small differences of hue, but also for each particular hue, like let's say, um, well in this case 5R, right? For 5R, what we have is we have a chart, right, that lays out what that hue looks like in terms of all of the changes of value and intensity. And this chart is designed to go from the, the lower the color is, the darker it is, the higher, the lighter, right? And so we see the very darkest color and the very lightest color also on the most neutral side. Things shift in chroma, otherwise known as intensity, as they go from the left to the right. The further out they go from this central bar, right, the more intense they get. And here's the most important piece of information. For many of these colors, they are only most intense at one spot, which means at one value level. There's only one place, one value, that we can say that this red, and sometimes maybe it's two, but usually it's one place where we can say this red is at its most intense. And after that, it starts to lose intensity. Right as it gets darker, it loses intensity, meaning that we can't. So we can't really make a super high intense uh, version of this red that is also the same value as this black, and we can't make a version of this red that's super intense that's at the same value as that white. Okay, so because of that, the actual shape of the color sphere is not spherical. It is instead this kind of weird. Um, kind of like a twisted sort of football shape, right, where it swells out in certain places. So at the yellows, right, where the color is most intense at very light values, it's very high up. And then let's say at the blue violets, um, or as you would call the, um, the blue purple or the purple blue, it is most intense at much darker values. Right? And so it's kind of like it's balanced in some ways, but it's not, it's very kind of uh, wonky looking. Right? So here we can see a number of charts all at the same time in the small version or a slightly bigger version. Right? And like I said, some colors you might see them being equally intense at, um, at slightly different value levels. Um, and even, let's say, in the uh, uh, kind of, this is, yeah, blue violet. In the blue violet region, we actually have very, very intense um, at a number of dark values. Uh, I'm not convinced that it goes all the way. I feel like there should be an in between. There should be some indication of a of the turn of a curve, but that's me. Um, and then all of these can be put together in a color tree like this. This is a digital version of a Munsell color tree, but you can actually make them physically. 
and I like the physical ones because the painted colors I think actually represent the true changes of intensity like the in-between saturations are more believable in the painted version than in the digital version where I feel like the something about the the digital created color doesn't represent those subtle shifts of intensity as, as clearly for me. So let's talk about the things that you guys are going to be making uh, for this unit. We might get this done in one part. So here is an, ex an example of the scales that you have to make for this unit and on the in terms of your digital exercise. And you need to make three scales. Um, two of them are going to be shifts of intensity with as little value change as possible. And uh, one of them is going to be a shift in hue with as little value change as possible. These are in individual steps, although sometimes it's hard to see the individual steps, like on this one, because the values are so close together. So this is my test one, and it's not perfect. It's, it's pretty good. Um, the, the yellow to green is the best. The green to gray is, is pretty good, especially from about here onward. Um, a little bit of shifting um, that look you can see some value change right there. It is the weakest on the red. I think in part because my the gray that I started with is just a hair a little bit too dark. And then we also have this one that shifted a little bit darker. Notice how this one's a little bit darker than that one and that one. And let's look at some student examples. Student examples are, are also pretty good. You'll notice on just about every one, the red is the one that they struggle with the most, which is natural. It's the hardest one to do. Um, here, this is Clara's, and I think her gray that she used to match is maybe just a hair too light, but then also she's got some, you can see kind of like clearly this subtle shift as it's getting darker. Um, and um, whereas the green is a little bit closer, notice that sometimes you'll get a dark spot, like the gray and this green are pretty close match, and there's just a subtle shift, but notice how these two feel darker than the ones on either side. Once again, notice how the yellow to yellow green is the, is the best shift, where you almost can't see the edges between them. This one is um, Sarah Upchurch, and it's probably the best set, I would say. Really good. Um, and um, yeah, her, her green to gray um, is really, really excellent. Remember, this all depends, or really begins with getting the right value gray for the value of the color you're looking at. And um, her yellow to green is perfect. It's better than mine. It's really good. Um, the red to gray is also really good. Um, notice both Claire and I also struggled on it, so it's obviously not the her best one, not Sarah's best one, but it's still quite good. Um, and you can only just slightly see this little bit of a shift in value in each of them. Um, potentially, I would say this gray is maybe also, like Claire's, just a hair too light. Um, okay, and then um, and this is Sarah Gilliland's. Um, and once again, her green to yellow is really, really good. She got that down quite well. Um, her yellow to gray is pretty good, except for the very outside gray is, is definitely too dark. And then her red to gray, the red and the gray are a pretty good match, but then we have some other kind of problem developing where they're getting lighter in the middle. A lot of this depends on what kind of version of, of mixing the colors. I used Photoshop, and so I was using um, transparent layers to make the, um, the, the in-betweens uh, colors. So. This leads to um, the homework assignment, and here are some sketchbook um, examples of someone thinking about the homework assignment, and then here's this homework assignment. I think we'll be able to finish this all in one section. So the homework assignment is basically in an all red palette to create a composition with as little value change as possible. Notice on this one, I still feel like the gray is a little bit too, a little bit too light, um, and then this leads to back to our original um, project. This is the main thing we're going to be doing for this this unit and is to make this chart. And here I'm just showing you what we're going to be doing in the third unit. All right, thank you very much.